Hey everybody, it is Jason from the Texas Gun Vault 2, and I'm out here in the garage tonight. I guess coming to you with another episode of what I will call Garage Gun Talk, where I'm just out here in the garage uh, every night. Just want to talk about what's ever on my mind, usually something about guns, uh, what's going on in uh, gun politics, maybe current events, or just, I don't know, something interesting that is just something that I think you guys might want to talk about. So I've got three things I want to talk about tonight. First thing is kind of a channel update. And that is over on the main channel, I am about 200 subscribers away from hitting 10,000. And that's awesome. Um, if you guys uh, probably know, there was a time when my channel had almost 50,000 subscribers about uh, back in January. I guess what, nine months ago or so. And of course we had issues when... Uh, YouTube was going after gun channels, you know, all the big channels got hit with various uh, content violation strikes on videos that were four, five, six years old, you know, uh, my video got uh, struck because, or my channel got struck because I had videos where I attached a suppressor, and YouTube started calling that gun modification, and they struck so many videos so fast, uh, essentially all my strikes happened like that, and I was just virtually kicked off of YouTube and uh, lost everything. Uh, I appealed, and of course the people that you appeal to don't know anything about guns. They eventually change their rules, but still the people that review it, they don't care. It's just a gun channel, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's kind of miserable, and I lost everything, so I just started to use this as an opportunity to rebuild my channel, uh, continue the brand. Uh, so I started to upload new content. I started to upload all of my old content that I had saved with new thumbnails, uh, new updates. Uh, I tried to modernize all the videos better. I tried to make better playlists. And instead of having everything kind of cluttered on the Texas Gun Vault, I separated things where all of my gun content and reviews and serious discussions are over on the main channel. This became my behind-the-scenes channel, where it's a lot more casual. And uh, anyway, I'm almost at 10,000 subscribers. And I did that in... See, I started the, my main channel February the 1st of 2023. And it's, what, like mid-October or late... I guess late October. Uh, was it 22nd or 23rd? of 2023 and we're about to hit 10,000 subscribers. So I'm going to take that as a win. Uh, I think if I would not have been, um, I guess, blocked and banned and all that kind of stuff and, you know, had content strikes, um, I probably would have been over, I don't know, maybe 70,000 by now. But anyway, it is what it is. But when life gives you lemons, you try to make lemonade. And that's what I did. And I think the main channel now is a lot better than it ever was. Uh, so we're on the right path. And so hopefully there's going to be bright things for the future. So that's the first thing I want to talk about. And, uh, I'm really excited because I really feel like the brand is growing again and I won't be stopped. So thank you all for being part of this journey with me. It means a lot. Um, something else I wanted to talk about was NFA wait times. I know I have one of my SBRs out here, which is going to relate to the last topic that I want to talk about. Uh, I get asked a lot because people know that I'm really kind of an NFA collector. You know, I do Form 1s and Form 4s. I recently was notified through the ATF eForm system that one of my suppressors that is out just got approved, and it was at 168 days, which is a really quick turnaround time compared to what it's been. And for those of you that are waiting on tax stamps, uh, it really does appear that the wait times, for whatever reason, are starting to drop dramatically. For a while, they were starting to get up in the 250 range, the 260 range. When it came to days, there's people that are still over a year, but it seems like a vast majority of them are starting to come in quicker and quicker. I started to notice on some of the NFA groups on Facebook where people self-report um, their wait times on the Form 4s. It really seemed like it was going down and down and down. And right now it looks like the average wait time of a Form 4 is about 175 days and as low as 150 days. And some people are even getting them back um, 90 days and below. There doesn't really seem to be any rhyme or reason. 
uh, for the order in what gets picked. But anyway, I'm hoping to pick up that suppressor uh, from my friend and dealer uh, in the next couple of days. But the Form 1s, I know some people are going to ask, you know, because this thing was originally a pistol. Uh, I Form 1'd it so I could put on the stock. Those are still coming back anywhere between like 30 to 45 days generally, but there's some people that are up to 90 days. So there's no rhyme or reason. I can't figure it out. But in general, the Form 4s are coming in quicker. So if you're under 168 days, um, maybe expect something around 168, 170, 175. So maybe that will brighten somebody's night. Uh, something else I want to talk about, and I know I kind of feel like I'm beating a dead horse here, is going back and talking about Larry Vickers. Because I guess it's just one of those things that has, um, I, I have to say, affected me a little bit. Because just like I talked about last night in my uh, video about not having gun tube heroes, while... Larry Vickers was not a gun tube hero for me. I didn't like idol worship him or anything. He was somebody that I looked up to. Um, he just seemed to be so intelligent, uh, so knowledgeable about guns, and just so well connected. And to find out all this stuff that he's done, and I know some people in the gun world are just going to want to defend him, which is perfectly fine, um, because they disagree with the laws that he broke. And it you know, as, you know, as I said, he did plead guilty. So this is not something that is up in the air of, oh, uh, they're just, you know, prosecuting him. He's under indictment. Doesn't mean he's guilty. Well, he pled guilty. So in the legal eyes, he's guilty. And it does seem to be that there's a lot of evidence coming out now from text messages and uh, just other things that have, that have come out that he was very well aware of what he was doing and it seems to have been intentional and his motivations for that might have been anything from um, just frustration with the ATF and the government like I think a lot of us have to uh, being upset with certain politicians it does seem like it a lot of it had to do with the Obama administration which you know we we can all understand you know um, some of it probably was for personal profit gain and money uh, and influence. Some of it could have been from thinking they were untouchable. Um, and who knows? Maybe some of it was ignorance and stupidity and a combination thereof. So his motivations, I'm still not 100% clear on, but it is pretty obvious that uh, he did some things intentionally. It's not like, oops, this is a paperwork mistake or whatever. It really does look like um, he was some are part of some, and I'm going to use this in air quotes, conspiracy. I know that's a word that people throw around, but a, you know, a conspiracy is just a group of people that work together to try to commit a particular crime. And it does look like this is exactly what happened. And an aspect of the story that I did not know about that surprised me was dealing with something that actually uh, is the reason I got this particular gun out. This is my uh, Kalashnikov USA or Kalashnikov USA. Every time I try to pronounce that name, uh, some people try to uh, make fun of me and put me through the ringer. But Kalashnikov, Kalashnikov, um, you know, wh whichever it is, um, this is my KP9. Uh, originally, it, it was a pistol, and I SBR'd it on a Form 1 so I can have the uh, stock on it and all that. Did it, and, I, and I did a few upgrades on it. But I got this out because... I just thought in my mind that this was just another AK company that started up with investors or whatever. And it now appears that this company might be related in some way to um, Kalashnikov or Kalashnikov concern in Russia. And that's what Larry Vickers was working with. I guess he was some type of consultant. He was trying to start up a U.S. division of that company. Of course, whether you like it or not, Russia is under very heavy sanctions. That company specifically, as an arms manufacturer, is under very severe sanctions, and he openly defied them. And some of the inf I mean, some of the stuff that I'm getting doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, uh, for example, when it comes to the stuff that he really uh, could be convicted for, um, which is like, I guess, espionage in a way, because he was sharing technical data packages. Um, which is the all the information on how a gun is built and all the specifications uh, with the Russians. So they were transmitting that information here or, or vice versa and that kind of stuff. 
which you're not supposed to do. But what really is bizarre to me is like a gun like this. Um, I know this is the 9mm version. It's, it's a little bit more rare here in, in, the, in the U.S. But uh, let's just say a regular AK, you know, whether that be just a standard AK-47, AK-74, AKM, AK-12, whatever. It's not like the specifications of those guns are some type of hidden secret. I mean, there's enough of those in the country that even if you didn't have access to the technical data package, um, people that understand machinery uh, could easily reverse engineer it, you know. But it's my understanding that they got the actual data packages from Russia, which they're not supposed to do. So the transmission of that data is against the law. And they're not supposed to have that. Um, the, the two companies, I guess, are supposed to be separate, but somehow they got it. Anyway, I don't understand a lot of that uh, legalese when it comes to corporation stuff and ITAR, which is the was it our, uh, law which deals with the export and import of firearms. I don't know anything about that because I'm not an FFL, SOT. I don't import. I don't export. I don't do any of that stuff. I'm just a average gun guy like uh, a lot of you guys. But it was explained to me that sharing that information is like a huge, huge no-no. Um, even though a lot of the information is public knowledge, you can go online and Google it and find it. Um, you know, like all the specifications, all the dimensions of every part of an AK-47 or an AKM or whatever is out there. But to actually have the authentic data package to manufacture a firearm from is a big no-no. It seems silly, it seems pedantic, but they know that and they still broke the law. Um, but also it does appear that this company... Uh, Kalashnikov USA is somehow related to uh, the one in Russia. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. Um, but this is an all U.S. made gun, uh, so I don't, I don't know what any of that means. And some people might be going, "Why are you putting that online if there's going to be a problem?" Well, the ATF already knows because it's registered as as an SBR, and I don't think they're going to be going after anybody that has a semi-auto firearm. Uh, if people built guns from parts kits. Uh, you know, that were imported and maybe SOTs turned them into machine guns. That might be an issue. Uh, but I think all the people that own um, products from this company that are just semi-auto rifles are going to be perfectly fine. Um, but it really, and it, it really does appear that Larry Vickers was working with this company, and I had no idea. I just thought this was just another company, you know. Uh, just some maybe some people that really liked AKs got together, said, "Hey, it'd be a cool name. Let's just do this." But it does appear that it was associated with Larry Vickers, and this is part of some conglomeration that has some association, and that's a no-no. And no matter what you what what you guys think or feel about Russia, uh, or the law, or ITAR, or import export laws, or the ATF, I tell you guys that I think it's really smart to always work within the law. Now, I know some people will say that the government's always overstepping and, you know, if you allow them to keep doing what they do, it's a gradual step towards towards tyranny. And I understand that. And I, and I do think, think I understand that perspective. And I also think, though, that rational heads must prevail and you have to use common sense because there might be a day in the far future where... Possibly, we might have a civil war here in the U.S. The government goes too far. But you want to make sure that the day that that happens, that people stand up and there's a real armed conflict, that it really is, without question, self-evident the government has gone too far. You just don't want to willy-nilly try to create a civil war. That's not smart um, because... You not only have to win the war, you have to win in the court of public opinion. And we're just not there yet. We're just not there. So if you're one of those people that's like, you know, he didn't do anything wrong, I understand. I understand that perspective. But I still think that you need to work within the law. Because right now, for example, I mean, here I am sitting in Texas. Okay, now I know that not every citizen of the U.S. is as lucky as I am. But, 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 but here I am with a 9 millimeter. Russian designed, and I say that because it's inspired by you know the Russian submachine gun. What's it called? The um, it starts with starts with the, with the V. Um, but anyway, it's it's inspired by that um, semi-automatic rifle, 
you know, 30 round magazine, all this kind of stuff. And here I am, I can own it. It's fine. I take it to the range. I have fun with it. My rights are not being infringed upon, you know, so we're not at that point where they're coming door to door to, you know, kick, you know, to, to kill your dog, kill you, confiscate everything. We're just not there yet. So being upset about stuff and, and, you know, wanting some type of armed conflict and armed revolt, it just, it, you won't win in the court of public opinion. But anyway, so as I say, is you got to work within the system to change the law. That's where that's the step we're at, at right now. You have to show that you know you voted to uh, or uh, get legislators in that are going to repeal the laws. You did all these different things. Um, you followed the law and so forth up until a certain point, you know. And Larry Vickers did, did not do that. He didn't. And whatever his motivation was. I think now is the last thing that we don't know, really, because he's admitted fault, he's admitted guilt, and he did some, I'm going to say some bad things, but luckily nobody is hurt or killed because of his actions. It wasn't like he was smuggling guns into the country illegally and getting them to people that shouldn't have them. It wasn't any of that, okay? A lot of it was, I think, for fi for financial gain. So... Anyway, that, that's what's going on. So I just wanted to bring out this uh, really cool S SBR that I have because it's made by the company that I guess Larry Vickers was on the board of directors of uh, and possibly got him into some trouble. So I had no idea about that. You know, some weird things about some arms companies around the world is that we don't really know who owns them. Um, I would suggest if you are ever curious and want to go down a rabbit hole, Go look up and try to find out who the actual owners of Heckler & Koch is. Good luck finding it. Because if you go online, you go to like their Wikipedia page or whatever, it just says it's a private arms you know, firm in Germany. Um, but you can't actually find out who owns HK. Seriously, like you, you, know, you, 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 you can find out some information, you know, like, oh, it's an investment group. Okay, what investment group? Don't know. It's really weird, and I don't and I don't know how they're sheltered by that. Maybe it's that way in German law for a reason. Um, don't know, but that's just the way it is. So, um, I guess this company, Kalashnikov or Kalashnikov USA, was kind of the same way. But we have different laws here. But it does appear that there were some issues with this company that they were essentially the U.S. version. And consortium of uh, Kalashnikov concern in Russia, or maybe there's some type of connection. I'm sure they don't share bank accounts or anything like that. Uh, and obviously, the U.S. division is run by people that are U.S. you know uh, citizens. Um, but yeah, it does kind of appear that some of it was like some I don't know illegal activity going on. And here's the thing: as I said, if you don't like Russia, you don't like Russia. But you know, don't be doing business with countries that have sanctions even if you like the country or whatever just don't do it just don't do it make smart decisions you know when i argue with anti-gunners a lot i just don't say argue debate when i debate anti-gunners a lot uh, because i have a lot of friends in the music world that were not born here and uh immigrated to the united states or are here on Anything from work visas to student visas or what have you. You know, especially like I have a lot of like Korean friends. And one of the things that they tell me is that they're uh, scared here in the U.S. and their families back in Korea are scared for them because of all of the news media regarding guns. They're like, oh my gosh, there's guns everywhere. You're going to die, blah, blah, blah. And the truth of the matter is, I mean, there's always going to be things that are going to be out of your control. I mean, you can be at a restaurant and be a victim of a random act of violence, okay? But if you look at all of the deaths from firearms in the United States, the vast majority of them, vast majority, like, I don't know, I don't have the exact numbers on hand, but I know it is a very large amount, are suicides. So I tell my friends, well, if you're not going to commit suicide, most likely you are now not going to be uh, a victim of gun crime. And then the ones that are actually like homicides and things, uh, pretty much if you're not a member of a gang, okay, you don't do, you're not a member of organized crime in any way, uh, and you're not using 
or dealing drugs. Pretty much if you don't deal drugs, you don't use drugs, and you're not a member of a gang, and you have no plans on committing suicide, the chances of you being killed by a firearm is almost zero. It really is, statistically, based off of how many people are in this country. It is crazy how certain statistics get so taken out of proportion. They just get so so taken out of proportion. But anyway, uh, that's what I wanted to talk about tonight. So uh, do you guys have any Kalishnikov USA guns? Whether it be like the pistols or the rifles or any of that. Uh, for a while, um, I was looking at one of their uh, AKs. I never got it because they they actually had a pretty affordable price on some of them. Uh, I really was hoping they were going to come out with an AK-74 in 5.45. Um, that is just one cool cartridge. Um, I know ammo is a little bit hard to get. But for me, AKs in 5.56 or 2.23, just, they just don't do it. They just don't do it. You need the original Russian uh, caliber. With that very tapered tapered case. Uh, I kept hoping they were going to come out with something like that. But who knows, maybe now that this is all going on, um, you might see the um, supply of Kalashnikov USA guns dwindle pretty fast. They might go out of, go out of production. So uh, I'm not telling you what to get or what's going to be collectible, but I'm sure glad I got this one. Because I f now feel like this thing might only go up in value. So... That's all I wanted to talk about tonight. Almost at 10,000 subscribers. NFA wait times are getting better. And all of the craziness that we're discovering about Larry Vickers. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. And I also want to thank you guys uh, because I am humbled beyond belief that so many of you watch to the end of these videos. Because in last night's video, I was like, hey, say the word Bushmaster or something and watch to the end. I had so many people, and it's even people that I, of screen names that I don't even recognize. So, um, just humbled that that people watch my content. Um, I, I I can't express that in words. You know, it's just how humbled I am. It's just uh, wow. Um, I just hope that I bring you guys something to talk about, something to think about uh, as often as I can. If you guys like guns. I know you're not going to like every range report or product review that I do um, or everything that I talk about on this channel, but uh, I hope it is for some of you. So anyway, that's why I make this content. Uh, I just want to be an average gun guy and make content that I would want to watch. You know, so anyway, so just want to bring out this cool gun and I guess kind of do a little show and tell on it. Uh, before I let you go, I'll show you the coolest upgrade on this gun. And when I saw it on their website, I knew I absolutely had to have it. So besides this, having this triangle stock, which uh, can be folded like that, uh, I found out that they had this uh, gas tube, which really isn't a gas tube on this because it's direct blowback. But if you notice, it has a charging handle. So this thing can be charged like an MP5, but also it has like the cheese grater look on top of that. So if you want to... You can charge it like an MP5. You can even do the HK slap if you wanted to. Isn't that cool? That is just a really, really cool upgrade. But of course, you can always charge it the standard way as well. So anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about tonight. And so I hope you guys are having a great week. So let's have a great conversation in the comment section below. And if you watched to the end of this video, um, let me see here. Type in... Kalashnikov or Kalashnikov and those people that know how to pronounce that word can tell me in the comments how I'm saying it wrong every single time <laughs> so as always thanks for watching